Oh hey, just when you thought it can't get any worse, it got worse. Getting over it with Bennett Foddy is a platform video game developed by who? Bennett Foddy. Thank you. So what is this game? How does it play? Well, it revolves around you controlling characters stuck in a large cauldron. You wield a long hammer which you can use to grip objects and move around. You try to move and progress your objects associated with difficult platforms and other stuff. And this is how you basically move throughout the entire game. You can only move using a mouse or trackpad which can get incredibly exhausting in a long playthrough. There are no checkpoints in any part of the game which increases the risk of losing some of your progress, causing you to go all the way back down. So what else? Um, there's text and someone talks in this game. Thank you. The game was released on October 6, 2017 on Windows, 2 months later on Mac and iOS, Android on April 25th, 2018, and on Linux around August 2018. So that pretty much wraps up everything about this game. The first reason I want to play this game is that it's difficult. The second reason is that it's part of my character arc. So let's play this game, and I promise I won't underestimate everything that this game has to offer. So we control our character by moving the hammer around. This portion of the game is more of a tutorial per se. It's pretty simple. We're off to a great start. Then we made it into this section, and this is where the game truly begins. This is the first real part of the game, and this is pretty much what the whole game is going to be. I mean, what else can I say? It's a physics-based game with obstacles. I could talk about it or just make a rage compilation like Markiplier. Either way, I'm not interesting at all, which means there's no reason for you to watch me in the first place. But here we are. We can only move using a mouse, and since this game is frustrating as hell, it can get pretty exhausting to move your arm around with the mouse but you can change the mouse sensitivity. I just use the default setting. There's not much strategy here, it all just depends on how fast you can move your mouse. Whenever you meet a new obstacle, you can pretty much take a risk and try to figure out how to get over it. But since I'm a good person and have nothing else to do, I will give you guys a guide to the entirety of the game. So here's my first tip, don't. If you're listening to me, do not play this game. I've only reached this point because I've got nothing to do. So if you also got nothing to do, do something else other than play this game. So here's the real first tip. You can launch yourself by pointing your hammer to the ground then flick your mouse. Trust me when I say that this move will really help you. There are certain obstacles that you can't reach just by swinging your thong around. Just note that sometimes you launch far away and sometimes you don't. Next, when reaching these two parts, doing this can give you a slight jump. It'll bounce you to the other side and this is actually really useful to do when you're in either of these parts. So what's the next tip? Don't panic. When you fall or lose your progress, don't wiggle around. Sure, you may not control your anger when you lose progress, but when you try to rush back to where you were, you'll end up having another risk of losing more progress and starting all the way back here. This problem is the most prevalent when playing this game. With a game that's sole purpose is to give you a headache, it's easy to lose your progress constantly. Now let's talk about levels. In this part, you should swing by the branch. You can launch yourself and quickly grab the roof, but for me, it's easier to just swing by the branch. Once you make it to the barrels, launch yourself upwards and try to move the coffee away. If you do this, you can move on to this part. Now, this part is pretty tricky. There are multiple places for you to rest, but some of the rocks can get in the way of you moving on to the next area. I recommend staying on this spot, launching yourself upwards and quickly grabbing the ledge. You might need to do this a couple of times since this rock here can bounce you up once you launch yourself. Next there's this red steel thingy. You can either move to this spot or here, though this spot is riskier and you might fall off and start all over. This thing can slide you off but there's this little area here that you can grab onto. Then we move on to this area. This area will take a lot of tries. But if you remember that trick I told you earlier, this area will be a breeze. Now once you made it to the top here, be extra careful. You need to launch yourself to the right and quickly grab onto the ledge. It's easy to accidentally bounce off here, but it doesn't happen too frequently unless you're not being careful. Once you climb on top of this building, you need to grab onto this thing and swing yourself to the left. When you reach the end of the thing, there's this little gap that you need to be extra careful in this area because you might accidentally fall all the way down. Next, we have to be extra careful in this area because... 
Mm. The mountain seems no more a soulless thing, but rather as a shape of ancient fear. In darkness and the winds of chaos born, amid the lordless heavens thundering, a presence crouched, enormous and austere, before whose feet the mighty waters mourn. This area here is absurd. There are very few objects to grab onto and it's easy to fail at this part over and over. And it's right next to this area here. Once you made it to the boxes, just casually drop down here and quickly grab the boxes. I wouldn't recommend launching yourself because you might bounce off to the side here. Now we made it to the stairs. This part you're going to try a lot. It's easy to fall down here and it's difficult to progress through this area. But if you remember the trick we used in that one part, you can also use that trick here. There are many ledges here that you can grab onto, but there's very little area for you to do so. So slightly launch yourself upwards and swing your hammer to the right. You need to do this repeatedly. Once you made it, try to move yourself onto the tip of the chair. You want to be as close as you can to launch yourself towards the camera. You won't have any height once you launch, so quickly grab onto. Now try to move slightly to the right and launch yourself towards the couch. Again, you won't have enough height to reach it, so quickly grab onto it. Now this part isn't the trickiest, but I advise you to not want to rush this part. You've made a ton of progress at this point, so carefully and slowly make your way through this part. Now we made it to the orange. In this part, you have to be extra careful. It's easy to bounce off when you reach the rocks, and there aren't many platforms where you're safe. It's basically a 50-50 of you losing progress and progressing through this part. I would know that because if I didn't, I wouldn't have this footage here. Once you made it to the building, you still need to be careful here because you're nowhere near safe yet. You just need to launch yourself and grab onto the ledge here. And you need to do this twice with the next obstacle being this hand. There's very little room here so you need to be very careful when launching yourself upwards. Once you made it to the roof, launch yourself slightly to the right and try to grab onto this ledge here. Again, be careful. When you move over to the next area, you are safe now and the risk of going all the way down is gone. Then the next part is pretty easy. Stand on the hedge and launch yourself towards the roof of this house. I recommend you move this hat off the screen so that you have less stuff to worry about. When you reach the anvil, you have to move yourself to its very corner and launch yourself to grab onto the ledge. The ledge is pretty high up and this part will take a lot of tries. There's no room for failure here. If you fail, you just land next to the anvil. So take your time in this part. Then you have to launch yourself onto this floating rock. You have to be extra careful here because it's easy to fall off accidentally. You can't see where the next platform is, but if you move slightly down to the left, you can see where the next rock is. The next rock is much smaller, but this one is closer to the next platform at least. But if you fall down, you can see that it's actually a snowman. No reason to point this out, but I did, moving on. You have to do this a few more times until you eventually move to this part. Do not ride the snake. Do not ride it. Do not ever ride the snake. If you do, you're going to regret many things in life. This part may be the trickiest yet. You need to launch yourself and grab onto the bucket. Then swing gently so that you don't fall off. Let go and quickly grab onto the ledge here. It's easy to fall off if you're swinging a bit too hard. So be gentle when doing this part. Now when you made your way to the slope, you need to be careful as well. This part will take a lot of tries and you can lose a ton of progress if you fail. So once you made it here, be very careful. Try to rest here and launch yourself gently and swing your hammer to the right. After you climb this structure, you finally made it to the final obstacle of the game. The radio tower. All you need to do is to grab onto the radio dishes and try not to bounce off the side. It gets trickier the more you reach the top and the radio dishes get smaller every time. I advise you once more to be extra careful. If you fail, you will go all the way down and you will suffer as I have suffered. Once you made it to the top, launch yourself upwards and make your way through space. And that's the game. Why did I play this? Now that we got all of those out of the way, are there a few things to appreciate in this game? Well, I'm glad this game is pretty cheap, because if it weren't, you would be buying the greatest ripoff in video game history. I do like the randomness of the game. There are so many objects that appear in the game that have no business being in here. I mean, sure, it's a physics game, so it needs different objects for its obstacles, but still. Why is there a child here? The mouse being the only control method adds to the frustration of the game, so I think this game would also work well with a controller. I imagine it might be worse than using a mouse. Actually, I'm regretting this idea. Please, if any modders watch this, do not make a mod for this. I want to make another video talking about... Ben Fart. Though I hate this game with all my heart, I have to credit 
very furry for making a game that's hell-bent on giving you the worst time of your life that makes you want to punch a child. It did its job well, and that's at least something I could appreciate to something I deeply hate. Is it a good game? No. But looking at this game critically, maybe. My hatred for this game completely overpowers my will to critique this game justly. I don't know how to rate this game. So, maybe in a few years I'll look back at this game and give it a proper rating. I'm not gonna play it again, no, it's just that I couldn't rate it now. So let's see what my future self thinks about this game. I hate this.